Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this in-depth session. We will be discussing about peak-based transceiver testing. Joining me here, there is an expert in this field for going through the presentation. Hello, Francois. Hello, Aldo. Well, Francois Marcotte is a subject matter expert currently working at Expo in Montreal, Canada. With more than 28 years in the telecom industry, he began his career at Bell Canada. Over the years, Francois has developed deep knowledge on Ethernet, OTN technology, and optical transport. Um, he is also a regular speaker in different seminars in North America. So, um, welcome once again. I'm Aldo Gutierrez, product line manager at Expo, responsible for the line of products involved in the transceiver compliance testing, including electrical bit array testers, optical and electrical sampling scopes clock data recovery sources, and optical spectrum analyzers. Um, please don't hesitate to ask questions to Francois or myself. You can put it there directly in the chat, or you can also raise your hand, and uh, we can uh, reply uh, directly. So we will try to keep this session as interactive as possible, so uh, please don't hesitate. And also, uh, well, keep in mind that this is the second part of the presentation. Um, and uh, this session is recorded and will be available on demand. Okay, so let's go to the content of the presentation. So the agenda for today's session is, uh, well, at the first part, I will be introducing the big base pluggables. So it's all about uh, the technical background of the different transceivers. And then in the second part, uh, Francois Marcotte will be presented a live demo. So he will be evaluating the quality of a 100 gig transceivers, and he's going to um, evaluate the different electro optical tests. Okay, so let's get started with the background. So, according to the recent Microsoft staff testimonials, power consumption is the main limiter uh, for going. 400 gig beyond 400 gig in data centers. Okay, as you know, power consumption and thermal management are strongly correlated, and and, and today they are the uh, the most concern or the biggest concern uh, for uh, people working in in high speed applications. The only way uh, to overcome this technical drawback is by using photonic integrated circuits. So. Uh, Peak or photonic integrated circuits, since uh, the technology perspective, uh, peak are the cornerstone for high speed communication driven by today's high speed optical transceiver, mainly for data centers. So, the purpose of this technology is to integrate in a single chip all the passive and optical, passive and active optical functions. Okay. And there are different advantages that this. This technology offers, sorry. Probably the most important is the uh, the high integration that uh, that the designers can achieve with it using uh, peaks, uh, which allow for sure to uh, increase the density of pluggables uh, inside the racks. And, but also there are another advantage, which are, as I said before, the lower power consumption uh, compared to the traditional transceivers, which is also um, linked with the better thermal management. Okay. Uh, another advantage is that this technology can be produced uh, for high volume, and with that we can reduce the cost. So. Uh, Inside of a transceiver based, uh, inside of, of a uh, photonic integrated circuit based transceiver, there are some uh, different uh, optical components. So we can classify those in uh, active and passive. So the active is for sure the lasers. So at the transmitter side, we have uh, the laser based in indium phosphide, which is uh, the main technology for those. And then we have the passive part, which is a uh, 
uh, to uh, to send the the optical signal to everywhere in the peak. So for that we have the different waveguides based on silicon photonics, and also we have the modulators. Uh, the most common architecture for the modulators are the max sender interferometers. And finally, the other active part inside of the transceiver is uh, at the receiver side, which is basically the photodetector uh, developed in silicon or germanium. Um, in today's market, there are different peak based samples. So, uh, for instance, uh, there are some going from 10 gig up to 400 gig. Uh, in the case of uh, 10 gig, we have uh, some samples in SFP plus uh, form factors. Then we have for uh, 100 gig different QSFP, uh, sorry, QSFP28 transceivers. And also we have for 100 gig, 200 gig, 400 gig, the CFP2 DCO for factors. Uh, something that I, will, uh, I would like to highlight is that, uh, as you know, CFP2 DCO is a coherent transceiver and all the coherent transceiver are based in peak. Okay, this is the main technology uh, to achieve uh, the coherent samples. And as you know, the coherent is the new trend in transceiver field and probably is the next generation of transceivers. Uh, talking about high speed, there are also some 400 gig samples and uh, based in peak in QSF PDD form factor. But uh, the good news is that also for 800 gig, uh, the draft version that the different vendors are uh, presenting today, they are based in a uh, peak technology. So, which means that, uh, for instance, here I present uh, some draft from uh, Neo Photonics. In this case, the key optoelectronic components are based in silicon photonic uh, max sender interferometers with uh, germanium and silicon photodetectors at the receiver side. Okay. So taking a look at the uh, at the market, so here I present some information about the silicon photonic forecast for all the applications. So here, as you can notice here, we have some uh, uh, applications for sensors and also for LiDAR, okay? F but uh, the most interesting role is forecast for the transceivers field. As you can see here, there is a huge portion of the uh, of the silicon devices, which are for data center transceivers, but also there are another important, which is the long haul transceivers. And finally, uh, by the landscape of 2025, we're gonna have the 5G transceivers as well. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, a uh, big base transceiver is the next generation in this field. So uh, now let's move to the how to uh, how to evaluate the quality of transceiver in production floor. So uh, well, uh, to guarantee the compli uh, compliance to specification and standard in, in the industry, testing of electrical and optical parameters is an essential step in the manufacturing process. So uh, the test can be divided in two categories. In one hand, we have the parametric test which uh, the objective is to evaluate the internal optical components of the transceiver. And then in, on the other hand, we have at the final process of the manufacturing, we've got the functional test for uh, quality control purposes. Uh, going deeper into the parametric test, we're, we're going to uh, evaluate or the, object, the goal is to evaluate the different uh, optical uh, parameters, such as the average optical power, which is correlated with the uh, reach of the transceivers. Then we have the wavelength verification, which is typically performed with an optical spectrum analyzers. And then we have other two parameters, which provide um, some information about the quality of the laser and the quality of the transceiver itself, which are the side mode suppression ratio, SMSR, and optical signal to noise ratio, OSNR. So, uh, and on the functional test side, uh, for sure, the main uh, test is the beat error rate one. And also uh, there are other um, other tests performed by transceiver vendors uh, using uh, optical scopes and um, to calculate the optical modulation amplitude, which is really important for NRC and pound for signals. 
and also the extinction ratio. It's another important metric. And finally, for the characterization of the transceiver and the receiver, we have some stress tests, such as the reflectance one at the TX and the characterization of the sensitivity at the RX side. OK, so that's it for the description of the test. So now uh, let's move forward to the live demo. So Francois, the floor is yes. yours. Thank you very much, Aldo. So the first thing, uh, let me show you the transceiver qualification setup. Um, so we decided to use in this demo the uh, module called FTBX88200. Uh, and then it's using the um, transceiver, uh, of course, a CFP4. Then we have a variable optical attenuator to attenuate the signal uh, coming back to the transmitter. And as well, we can see the impact on signal to noise ratio on OZA. And of course, we can read the power uh, using an optical switch. So that's the, um, the uh, setup. So this setup is in base in Quebec City. And if you are, uh, you want to know more and have a, a, a personal demo, we can always do this demo again, okay, for you. So my first test will be the iOptics. iOptics is developed by X4. It's a program that is testing and validating the uh, transceivers. The first thing it does, it, it does an MDIO uh, validation or, or I2C. It's a quick check on the electrical level, then it does an optical transceiver level and stability uh, test. It does the same thing for the receiver, so level and stability, so you can see minimum and maximum. It will do a bit rate test and will monitor power and temperature. So I'll, I'll jump to the uh, demo. Uh, so I'm using the 88200, that's fine. And under the test application, I start the uh, eye optics. So sorry, I was uh, uh, doing the BERT at the final point, so that's why I have now to reset the ioptics. Now this this test set, as you can see, can do a lot more tests, but uh, for peak uh, testing, then ioptics and bit error rate are what I will be using today. So in this case here, you see in this module, I have a few different uh, interfaces. And so so sorry to interrupt. Probably yep. you should uh, reset the uh, VOA. Yes, as I will. Thank you very much, uh, Aldo. <laughs> You're totally right. Uh, so yes, I'm using here the uh, optical attenuator, and I did put 3 dB. Now I'm putting zero back, so I'll have the proper uh, uh, receive power. Thank you. Um, then I'll start the, the test and I'll explain what's happening. So like I said, it's doing a calibration first. Uh, so it, it, it calibrates the test module. It, it, it makes sure that all the electrical levels are, are, are OK to go and validate the electrical level on the transceiver. So first one will be, like I said, the MDIO check. Then it will do the other test after. What is important is it will all, always monitor the power consumption and will monitor the temperature at the same time. Now, this information about a power range for transmitter and receiver is read from the transceiver. So it's already a test because if your peak uh, def definition has been done correctly or peak, uh, sorry, peak development and design, then this information will be uh, available. Uh, on the I2C or an MDIO. Now you see it's doing the MDIO validation at the moment, so it's a check. It's doing also the pins, so the electrical levels. And when it's done, it's going to perform the other tests one after another. So you see it's starting right away to monitor the power consumption as well as temperature monitoring. Now it's doing the transmitter stability. Fine, you see there's a slight variation, but it in my book, it's it's OK. And then you have the optical receive uh, power test. That's also good. I have uh, an attenuation between the two, but that's OK. That's part of the, the, the network, the network uh, setup. Uh, sorry, the test setup. And then you have the bit error rate test performing right now, and you want to make sure you have no pattern loss and the bit error count is to zero. Now, the, the Test time for bit error is not um, uh, as long as the other tests I'll be performing after. It's up to 30 minutes if you want. In this case, I did set it up for one minute. 
Um, the information for the power consumption you see here, there's a threshold. This is red also from the transceiver. The transceiver is telling me it's 6.6 .6 watt. So then that's why I'm monitoring and I, I need to be below. That is very like uh, Aldo mentioned in his presentation. The power consumption is key in peak uh, design and you have to keep it to a very low or minimum. And if, if you are very low, then you'll sell more, of course, of your uh, transceiver, obviously, because data centers uh, power is the key of, uh, of everything. It's costing a lot of money. And then you have, of course, the temperature monitoring. When it's over, you have a, a verdict, pass and fail. You can create your report and put some information. This can be automized if you want. Uh, no. Uh, yes, I mean, yes. Uh, and in the uh, online uh, system, you do have, of course, key commands that you can refer to. And then you can, for example, fetch data for uh, bitter. So this is very easy to automate into, let's say, a scenario where you want to test multiple ones, uh, one after another. Uh, the next one will be uh, all done before I go there. I'm just going to switch uh, to save time uh, to the uh, Ethernet BERT. Just uh, probably yes, to highlight that yep. uh, with dia optics, we only need two or three minutes uh, to validate the sample. Which... Yeah, that's right. As you saw, it was not very long. Uh, it's validating and any new design, you, you should use eye optics to validate it. Now, after that, what you do is exactly what I'm showing. You do the bitter rate and now it's a longer test. It's a burning test with a chamber or without a chamber. It depends where you are into your uh, testing strategy. But where, where it ma what it matters is we can test up to 400 gigabit per second with the frame type modules we have, or all the way to 800 gigabit with the uh, electrical one that uh, we will be presenting next week, right, uh, Aldo? Uh, during our next uh, test talk. Um, so in this case this one support frame and unframe uh, signal structure which is pretty good i will reduce the power to the minimum uh, so to stress test really the transceiver and apply a test pattern and measure the bit error rate in some cases and uh, some transceivers you have fec so you have to validate fec so that is also part of our testing when fec is applicable or where fec is part of the transceiver so i'll switch to the demo so this is the uh, configuration. So I have a 100 gig, like I said, CFP4. If I click on the first box, I have access to the, tra the, the power. You see minus seven. The operation range is down to minus 10.6. What I'll do, I'm going to reduce the power a little bit. So I'll go here under my uh, attenuator and I will put 3dB attenuation, which will bring me, whoops, bring me close to what I want to be. Yes, perfect. You see one of them is minus 10.6. Perfect. The other ones are a little bit uh, uh, lower, but that's fine. I want to really test it that way to see if it's performant. And when I provide my spec, because when I define my transceiver, then I'd say it's good to minus 10. So I keep a margin. So perfect. So I start the test. And while I'm starting, then I have, of course, the, the bitter rate results. I have, uh, of course, if I have pattern loss, it will be indicated or any bit errors will be indicated. Any disruption, you know, power failure or anything that may happen uh, will be indicated. You can uh, confirm uh, with the bitter you will inject. And then um, this is the uh, test. Then you, you can actually reset it and then leave it for the duration. Now. I really recommend two hour tests or up to 24 hour. It depends uh, again on your uh, test parameters, but longer the better for a bitter rate to see, to really stress the, the transceiver. Um, you can actually, if I stop this, and since I have a, a few, another minute, uh, you can decide to do, uh, you know, on frame if you want, like 20 on frames. You click OK, and then you, instead of sending a bitter rate to the entire system, now you will test lane by lane. Sometimes if you have an issue with a, 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 the peak transceiver, this is a method to validate 
if all your transceiver are working OK. So you start the test again, but this time you see instead of having a combined bit error rate, it's per lane bit errors. So that's quite cool uh, if you ask uh, for this type of uh, testing. So Aldo? Very nice useful wanted. for the development and the R&D teams, right? Yes, that's right. OK, well, thank you, Francois. So, uh, well, uh, Francois just run a test for the whole side of the transceiver for the client side. Uh, if we go back to the to the initial setup, the CFP4 uh, is the duty. He has performed this part. So now let's check it out at the optical side of the transceiver. So to do that, I propose to use the optical spectrum analyzers. So now here we've got one of the OSAs from Expo, the FTVX5245. So as you can see here, the uh, uh, the OSA is running, is um, getting the spectrum. And here, well, what we have is uh, four lasers around the O band, uh, 1300 nanometers. And well, uh, considering that this is a uh, 100 gig transceivers, we have four carriers. We have four channels um, car, uh, with uh, 25 gigabits per second per lane. So as you can see here in the in the test results, we have all the information we need uh, for the four different channels. We have the lambda verification in this part. We have the average optical power here, which is the signal power. And then we have uh, the parameters which uh, provide information about the quality of the transceiver, which is the optical signal to noise ratio, which is basically the ratio between the peak power here and the noise level at this point. Okay. Uh, do, um, so the I on signal power, when you see I, means in band. Is that is that correct? No. At this, uh, well, thank you for asking. It's a very interesting question. In, in next one, we have different methods uh, to calculate OSNR, and it depends on the uh, on the rate and on the modulation. In this case, uh, the method that is used to uh, calculate the OSNR is the IEC standard one which is the interpolation method, which basically uh, it's like, uh, how can I say, we're evaluating both sides of the noise level, which means this point and this point, to compare the signal with this uh, first laser here, okay? But we have other one, uh, such as the in-service Polmox method for uh, 400 gig and beyond signals, okay? Well, so that's it for the uh, optical testing. So if you have any question, please feel free to to ask. I don't know if someone in the audience have any question uh, related with the different tests that we have performed. Uh, although I, I'd, I'd be interested, uh, could you replace uh, a wave meter with, with the OSA? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, it depends. This is a, uh, here, as I said before, I was checking the, um, I was verifying the lambda using the optical spectrum analyzers. But uh, for to do that, we need to make sure that the optical uh, optical spectrum analyzer has a very high uh, accuracy, wavelength accuracy. In this case, uh, if the OSA is, I don't know, plus minus 10 picometers of accuracy for the lambda, in that case, we can replace the wave meter. So in, in instead to have two different equipments in the production line, we're going to have only the OSA, which allow to reduce the capex and the opex. Okay. So uh, okay. So let's wrap up. Sorry this. About that. I don't know if you have any other question. So in our setup, and just to finalize, uh, you can attenuate the signal, and then see how many bit errors you're getting and compare it to, with the signal to noise ratio. So you can really do a signal to do uh, ratio comparison with bitter rate you're starting to get. So basically you go here and you attenuate uh, your signal until you're getting, you're starting to get on the, because we can test all these things together, right? So you can then look if you're starting to get bitter rates, no. So you then you continue attenuating and then you can specify uh, your thresholds. Yeah, that's all. That's I a, just wanted to add this. Uh, it's a key point, Francois, because uh, with the uh, VOA, with the attenuator, we can simulate the impairments in the network. 
So the idea is to introduce attenuations. We can control them, but in basically what we are doing is a kind of simulation of the different impairments that the network can experience. OK, so yeah, yep. thank you, Francois. Yep. That's very so good. Uh, let's go back to the presentation mode. So well, that's it for this session, but before to end the session, I would like to invite all of you uh, for the next week's session. Uh, Francois and me, we will be presenting the 800 gig pan for signal testing uh, session. In this case, we will talk about the fundamentals of 800 gig technology. The, you know, the industry is kind of talking about 800 gig. And what we'll be answering is when we're going to see the, uh, the first samples for 800 gig and how we should run the test for those kind of pluggables. OK, thank you so much. And yep. I hope to see you the next week. Thank you, Francois. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Aldo. Thank you very much, everyone.